Being on LinkedIn and a member of the entrepreneurs organization, I've learned a little bit about giving. And when you give from the heart and you give to help other people without expecting anything in return, it's crazy what happens. It's just amazing to see where the world goes and how it can change your life and the people you meet and the people you're introduced to. And, and it's just, that's an amazing journey. Randy McNeely, the kindness giver. I have the privilege of being on with an amazing man named Craig Wasselchak. And I'm just going to give a brief introduction of Craig and then we're going to dive right into a wonderful, what's going to be a wonderful interview. Now, Craig is a top notch speaker. He's the founder of a business called Crushing B2B Digital Strategies. His specialty is engaging, yes, I can say that word, in, engaging businesses on the power of B2B digital branding and lead generation. He's an owner of multiple commercial real estate properties, which are run through his property management company, JW Management, and that's all in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. With his team, he has built several multi-million dollar businesses and successfully sold a few of them. As an entrepreneur, mentor, advisor, and success coach, Craig has traveled the entrepreneur's journey, and so he knows his stuff. His passion in life is helping the next wave of CEOs and executives on how to scale their business. Craig, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for being willing to join us today. You're so welcome. And I'm going to, you know, given that this is the Kindness and Happiness Connection podcast, I'm going to dive right in and ask you to give us a brief description of why kindness and happiness are important to you and how what you do ties into kindness and or happiness personally, professionally, or both. Why it's important to me is just to live your life and be able to be around happy people and help people succeed and achieve their goals just really excites me. So whether it's your family or whether it's uh, close friends that you meet on LinkedIn or people in other organizations that you belong to, I like to see other people reach their goals. And if I can help in any way, and sometimes it's sitting in the background, but helping, that's okay. And, and, and I just like to do that. Uh, the other thing is being on LinkedIn and a member of the entrepreneurs organization, I've learned a little bit about giving. And when you give from the heart and you give to help other people without expecting anything in return, it's crazy what happens. It's just amazing to see where the world goes and how it can change your life and the people you meet and the people you're introduced to. And, and it's just, that's an amazing journey. Absolutely love it. Oh, that's fantastic. You know, and I have to say, I can vouch that Craig really, he doesn't just talk the talk, he walks the walk. He, you know, he reached out and we've had some great conversation uh, about multiple things and he truly is all about giving and helping and lifting and building each other or, or others and he's been able to build amazing businesses following that philosophy I want to ask you a, a quick question you know okay. you've been a businessman for a long time yes most was that of something that you you know yeah. always wanted to do in life or is that something that just kind of happened tell us a little bit about that yeah I remember when I was a, a little boy I was sitting out by the curb and I saw the postman go by and I saw him put the mail in the box and you know you see this over and over again I go went to my mom and I said mom I want to be a postman when I grow up so the closest I got to it was I owned a business for 27 years one that I recently sold where we sold postage meters so we were one of the largest rebuilders of Pitney Post postage meters in the United States for quite a while. And uh, I guess I became the postman. So that was one of the businesses we had along the journey. Wow, that's great. So, and you always wanted to do something, uh, do uh, be a businessman. So to start well, off. You know, 
My father um, was a successful entrepreneur and uh, just kind of built his systems up and, and, and stayed in the real estate business. And in growing up around it, you know, you, you realize that you, you want to be stubborn, you want to be independent, and you don't want to learn from your parents, but through osmosis, you learn a ton. Yeah, so yeah. eventually when he passed away in 2012 and I was in the family business along running my other businesses, uh, it's amazing how natural things come to you just because you're around people. You see it, but you're too stubborn to work together, you know? Things like yeah. that happen, right? Yeah, yeah. But, but I was around that and then uh, I studied, I, I went down to Baylor uh, in Waco, Texas, and I studied entrepreneurship and marketing. And I would tell my customers, you know, uh, when I had the post meter business, a little bit about me. I said, yeah, I, I went to school at Baylor. And that was back when there was three colleges in the whole United States that taught entrepreneurship. And Baylor, Baylor believed in it so well that they said, you need to major in something else. And I go, well, why? I want to be an entrepreneur. And they go, well, just in case it fails. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay. But it's amazing how the entrepreneurship programs have come along so far that yeah. you can major in it and you can be so successful in it uh, compared to when I started um, back in, you know, when I was much younger. That was in the early 80s. Wow. Yeah. So you've been at this for a long, long time. And so have you ever, in that time period, have you ever worked for anybody else? So I started quite a few companies when I was in college. And then uh, we, we sold, uh, we, had a, we had a business where we did screen printing and mm -hmm. uh, we built it up. Uh, I merged it with another company there in Waco. And then uh, we ended up selling it. And afterwards I said, you know, I've run three or four companies and, and, and I went to my father and I said, hey, you know, I'm not sure what I want to do because you know, your father's always asking, hey, what are you going to do now? And, and I what's said, plan? yeah, what's the plan? Where, where's your resume? Let's look <laughs> it over. You need to get a job. So yeah, yeah. Uh, we turned around and uh, I started putting together my resume and I sent it out to a bunch of companies and one of them that bid on it was Pitney Bowes. And they were my lead in to the post meter market. So I got there, I saw a large corporation from the inside looking at it and after being an entrepreneur already, I saw the things that I didn't like and the things that I could improve. And that was one of the businesses that I went into and built for 27 years and then sold it. So wow. that was the only, well, hold on. When I was a kid, I worked for my mom on the farm. We had to feed about 50 horses in the morning before I could go to school. And she only fired me about four or five times, okay? <laughs> Fired and rehired in the same day, I'll bet. Fired and re oh, I got fired and rehired a lot. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Oh, that's wow. So you worked for Pitney Bow for, for a time and then you built your own business. And I was there for two years and eight months in August of 1992 is when I started the business. Talk about yourself as if you're a serial entrepreneur. You know, How many businesses have you started? I'm on my 11th business right now. And there's one more business that we have that you didn't talk about in um, that business is in the technology of bringing touchless communications from signage uh, over to your phone so that uh, number one is we don't have to touch things. Number two is we can bring the technology and bring in chat bots and we can do some advertising kind of like Google, but on your phone. And that is the uh, Extend View Labs you can see uh, on my LinkedIn profile as well. Wow. And, and that, it's amazing the opportunities that are going on right now with that and, uh, and, and where we're going and where that business will grow. But uh, there's just all kinds of fun stuff. But when, I, when I'm in a business, I've gone through the process of being the person that's in the business, working the business and doing the doing and I was challenged when I was, uh, it's probably been 15, 15, 18 years ago by a gentleman named Ruben. He said, Craig, you got to stop working in the business. You got to start working on the business. Yeah. And how you did you make that transition? Time. That's a, that's an interesting uh, question. 
and, and I had a hard time because I was like, I have no time to do this. I'm working so hard on the business. I barely have time to go home, see the family and, and then get up and work the next day. And he said, no, you got to figure it out. We, we're going to work on this together. So then we started working on that. And over the over time, I, I got involved in the entrepreneur organization. A lot of books that I read, uh, Traction. Uh, we also have the book uh, Scaling Up. Yeah. And these books really push the concept of build your business and build your core values in your business so that you can grow it to the next level. And yeah. when when you do that, it allows you to start concentrating on growing your team and your employees and helping them be the best people that they can be to serve your customer. You are able to step back and let the business grow on its own. So as I start this uh, this next business, uh, you know, Crushing B2B, and then the next one uh, with the uh, Extended View Labs, I'm doing nothing but saying, how do we build that system so that it'll run on its own? And I can go sit on the beach with my wife and we can go travel around the world. That's our concept and where we're going on it. And it's a total different, it's totally different shift in mindset moving forward. And I'm so blessed that I can be at that stage in my life and be able to do things like that now. I was driving out to Reno, Nevada recently and I, I listened mm -hmm. to the e -Myth. Revisited oh, nice. by Michael, Michael Gerber. Gerber. Yes. And he talks about, you know, the technician, the manager, and the and the entrepreneur and how we have those three uh, personalities inside us. And it it's so easy. And 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 man, he was describing me to a T. It's so easy to start you're a technician, you know how to do stuff, and you think, Oh, I can do this pretty well. I can start a business. Yes. <laughs> yes. There's so much more that goes into it. It's not just working in the business because I mean it, the technician is the one that really gets in and does yes. everything yes. but you have to be able to manage the business manage the things that are going on and have ideas and a vision for how you're going to move forward how you're going to scale how you're going to grow yes. all that stuff and and it's an interesting challenge it's so a hard I, challenge it's a hard challenge to um what well, really challenge your mindset and do a shift and, and realize that you're not just doing the doing, you're building the systems and, and you've got to learn those skills. And just in reading that book, which I've read that book and over and over again and listened to it on audio type. And that was one of the ones that inspired me when I was younger. But how do you do that? And what are the steps of reprogramming your mind so you can successfully go out and run a business to its full potential. And, and they have certain levels, they say, within businesses. So when you go anywhere from, you know, a dollar in sales up to a million dollars, that's a plateau. Then when you go from a million dollars to two million dollars, that's another plateau. And what happens is commonly we can get a business to the two million dollar range in annual sales, but then we fall back at about 1.5. Uh, 1.25 because we haven't built the systems in place yeah. to be able to make it sustain that growth. And, and that's where you have to go back and retool everything and figure out how to grow it to that next level. Yeah. Yeah. And I love what you say about systems. Talk a little bit about more about that. What does that mean? When you talk and say systems, what are you talking about? Well, one of the things that, uh, uh, we have done is every time we do something that is repetitive, we turn around and write a SOP and that's our standard operating process. Now there's a book that just came out, Systemology, and yeah. uh, that book talks about it in the sense of you don't want to overdo it. You want to do it at about an 80-20 rule. So for example, 20% of the things that you do in your business really need to be documented. The other 80% don't come up enough or we already have the systems in place, it's just natural. We need to document the things that come up that slow us down, make us repeat things and waste time so that we can provide a service to a client 
or a process that we can repeat over and over again. And that was really inspired by Mark Michael Gerber in his book is how do we build the systems so that maybe a customer comes to a hotel and they know as soon as they get there that uh, they're gonna get this wonderful service and, and they have things provided for them of the things that they like all the time. And it's yeah. as simple as, can we throw it into a CRM? Can we know our clients to the next level so that when we get there, they're like family and we can treat them well with wonderful customer service and we remember things. In reality, we're just looking up on a computer. We can figure it out. It's not that yeah. hard to figure out how to give good customer service and repeat the service every time. Yeah, I love the example he talked about in there of the hotel of how like he went to dinner and they asked him, oh, and by the way, do you like this or that? You know, what do you like about this or this? You know, and, and when he first got there, well, do you like the New York Times or do you like the Wall Street Journal or other things? And every time he turned around, they were giving, something was showing up that he hadn't expected, but they had asked various questions and they tracked all that. And man, he had a great experience, loved that hotel and became a regular patron. You know, what's interesting is we have the ability in our hands and in our businesses to grow to the next level. And we implement, can implement systems like that, but we don't have the mindsets and the drive and sheer determination to do it. And it takes time. So, so in other words, if you and I were going to write a system on how to do a, uh, a broadcast like this, right? We're going to do a yeah. podcast. Well, we have to write down what are the steps to make it successful. You know, yeah. what I liked is you sent me a step prior to pulling me onto your show that says, Craig, here's the things that we should go over so that we're prepared for it and we can provide something that's good for the audience that's listening. And that's yeah. a good SOP, but well, it takes twice as long to do it, but otherwise we fail. Well, and think about it. Okay, this is the Kindness and Happiness Connection podcast. Yes. When you're in business, what's the greatest way you can be kind to yourself as a business? Take the time to document things. Yes. Take the time to simplement, simplify things as much as possible. Put a system in place that's repeatable so that if, you know, God forbid Joe Schmuckatelli is coming to work and he gets hit yes. by a bus and yes. he's the guy that has all the knowledge in his head, <laughs> well, the next guy that come along is going to be able to do the job because all that knowledge Absolutely. that's in his head has also been documented. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know? and, and that is the value of the process. Now, I have a hard time sitting down and documenting everything. I can only go for a certain amount of time yeah. because my head's a visionary head and I always want to go to the next level. So I pull in a team. So when we started Crushing B2B, we automatically put someone in charge of writing the SOPs to run the system. Why should I have to do it if I'm not the best person to do it? I just need to make sure as an entrepreneur and owner, we just follow the process. Do what's in the books. Just get and it done. That you have the processes down, that they're effective, that they're as simple as possible and that they're easily repeatable and not too over documented right yeah. if we over document it then it can even be our downfall well it can it's just like over analysis causes paralysis right over documentation yes. causes death <laughs> it really does yes, exactly. you know, example i mean legalese you've read contracts before i mean if you if you want to talk about over documentation and and getting to the end and you're just like okay if I have to read one yes. more sentence out of this, I'm going yes. <laughs> to strangle somebody, you know? In, 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 in how much time does that process waste when you go back and forth between you and the other company and the lawyers? It's you know, on a real estate business, it's common that we go back and forth on it. So what I do is I turn around and look over the document, highlight the things, and then I go, okay, I'm not going to send it to the lawyer. I'm going to pick up the phone and we're going to turn around and look at it and go back and forth and nail it in one run. That's it. Yeah. We're done. Yeah. So then we can save the time. And when I get off the phone with them, they usually come back and go, 
you know, that's probably one of the best systems I've ever been through because we got through it so fast. Well, it, it's an interesting thing. You know, I've been a risk assessor, a security risk assessor for a long time. And so many times organizations, well, can't you just send me a questionnaire that I can fill out? And it's, yeah, we can do that. But I'll tell you up front that it's going to take a lot longer to get things done that way. Well, there's why I can just fill it out and send it back. No, because you're going to send me back answers, which is great. It's what I'm looking for. But this questionnaire is a high level, can give me the high level answers. I'm going to see your answers and I'm going to have 15 more questions per answer, yeah. maybe, you know, and, and it'll be that much easier if we can just get on the phone or get on a call or I can come there in person, which I can't do right now, but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> if I can get together with you for this chunk of time, Yes. I know it seems like a, maybe eight hours, depending on how big the assessment was. Oh, yeah. But for, for this chunk of time, knock it all out and you'll be done. If yes. we keep going back and forth through the email, you're going to drag it on for weeks. Oh, yeah. And, how much time and, do people waste by doing that? Oh, it's just, it, it's insane. I wonder, I wonder if they've ever done a study for that. <laughs> to uh, see uh, how I, much I time people are have. wasting going back have. and forth. <laughs> well, we are getting near the point that we need to wrap up, but I want to ask you another question because okay. I, you know, I've heard that you're a member of the Entrepreneurs Organization. Yes. And, you know, I've read and heard great things about that. Of course, I've heard a lot of great things about it from you, but uh, yes. what, what are the requirements to be a member of that organization? So to become a member of the Entrepreneur Organization, you have to own a business uh, in, and it has to do at least a minimum of $1 million in sales. And commonly we'll see people uh, that are part of the organization that will be anywhere from 5 million to 100 million. Sometimes there are a few billionaires that are in there as well. But most of them are, are just people that are in the range of a million to you know maybe 30 million. But what's nice is they also have an accelerator program. In the accelerator program, as long as a company that are entrepreneur, right, has at least $250,000 in sales, they can join this program and apply to be a member. And then the other entrepreneurs come in and help mentor them and help them grow their business to that next level and get over a million dollars to join the regular entrepreneur program. And what is so nice about it is it's a system that once you join is taught to you so that you can all help each other at a different level. So we know that if we put 10 entrepreneurs in a room, it's kind of like herding cats. It's yeah. not going to work. Okay. So what they did is they built systems so that we can communicate on a different level. We're not giving everyone else advice. What we do is we give experience share. So what that means like for you, if you and I were in the group and we had a meeting, because we have once a month meetings, they're called four meetings. And what we do is we can experience share things that are happening in our lives that may be in the, the one to 5% that we don't share with other people. And then you bring that up. It's something you hadn't solved. You're trying to figure it out. And then the other four members experience share something they have gone through in their life, in their business, and it helps you kind of come up with solutions as you move forward and you can make good decisions moving forward. How has that been helpful to you and your businesses personally? Well, I would say the last business that I had, it helped me increase the multiplier of what the selling price was and come up with a win-win solution. And I don't think I would have recognized that it was time to sell my business if I was not in a forum where we were talking about it, going through the process and where I was at in my life and in, in where I was going. And it's really nice because I've got that support group around me. So is a story that has happened in the past. There was one of the entrepreneur members that was in a forum. He had a group, probably six to eight people in there and he fell on ill health. Well, the rest of the forum members came in, picked up everything and started running his business and their own businesses because they already knew him. They know how to run a business. The business they is knew a business, him, they liked right? him, they trusted him, so they took care of him. Yes, and they came in, they took care of him and it's amazing heartfelt stories 
that you hear in this organization. And there's over 14,000 globally that are, that are in the organization and we're all growing and trying to help each other. And, and, you, and you know what's an interesting thing? And, and so if you do a million dollars in sales, you're in the upper 4% of all businesses in the world. And I didn't know it was that small. Wow. And it's interesting to see how all these businesses can come together and help change the world and give back to everyone else in their environments. And, and it's amazing to see what the people can do and, and the, how they help other people grow their businesses. You're, you're speaking to my heart. I mean, really, I'm all about cultural transformation. And when you talk about success in business, true success is it's coming stemming from exactly what you're talking about. Being willing to lift and help and guide and strengthen and, and build and, and think about how that affects people. You know, you've talked about when, when you hear these heartfelt stories and you hear about what people are doing or in, in these guys that come in and took over that guy's business and ran it for him. Think about what that did for them. What kind of opportunities does treating others like that open up? People see how you're treating them, how you're taking care of things, and they want to work with you. Yes, I mean, it absolutely. Engenders, it engenders trust. Mm -hmm. When people know you absolutely. like you and trust you, and they can see the things that you're doing, it, it, it always opens up more opportunities. It's like it's nope. coming back around to what you were saying at the beginning. You know, when you, when you uh, have that attitude, it's amazing to see what happens. Yes. I know that I can literally call up any one of those 14,000 members. And if I'm in a position where I need to share something and, and have someone help me over the phone, they just pick up the phone and they go, how can I help you? Craig, it has been awesome having the chance to talk with you today. And so I want to ask you a couple more things. Do you have a, any tips, two or three tips or takeaways that you'd like to share with our audience? You know, my tip is if you want to learn business, and, and it's not always learning business as an entrepreneur. You can also learn it as someone who works within the business so you can be more successful is pick up the book Traction and read it. There's also a version of it that's in more of a story format that is called Get a Grip. And then the other book that I uh, recommend is Scaling Up. And those books have changed lives and businesses. i oh, got one more, Good to Great. It's oh, talking yeah. about getting the right people on your bus, which would be like your your business, and yeah. then getting the right people, if they're the right people for your business, get them in the right seats. Yeah. Yep. But if they're not, they need to get off the bus so that they can find another place where they fit better. But yeah. you need to you need to run that process and, and that book's a really, really good way to think about people and businesses and building everything and it's good for whether you're whether you're an owner or whether you're an employee within a business it teaches you how businesses should run i usually will start off with read the books and let's talk all and right that's, that's the best way that i've that i've approached everything the books changed my life totally changed my life well, and think about that, you know, you read those books, then you've got this wonderful organization you're working with, and it's a great point. It brings out a, a great thought. You can't do it all alone. No. You need, you need to learn and share with others in order to be able to scale up and thrive. Well, Craig, thank you so much for joining us today. If our audience wants to find you on social okay. media or on your website, you know, what, what, where, where can they go? They can always find me by putting my name into LinkedIn. You'll see me, uh, I'm always flying around on there. But they can also go to our website at crushingb2b.com. And I'm also on Pinterest, you'll see me under Craig Wasselchak or Crushing B2B as we build backlinks and we uh, drive business back through uh, Google back to our website. So uh, we, we've got articles that are all over the place uh, based on social selling and driving your business to the next level. 
So come, come see me. If you have questions, I love to answer questions. I'm not all about being a big salesperson. I'm about sharing the knowledge. And I think that's the way we should do. Uh, that's fantastic. Well, Craig, thank you again. We appreciate you being on the show with us this week. And a wonderful man named Craig Wasilchak. 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 Am I yeah, slaughtering that, Craig? <laughs> it really does. <laughs>